Hey guys, and welcome back to the channel. Oh my, my, my. Now the politicians are saying, how many more bodies have to pile up before we do anything about all of the suspicious so-called self-offings in relation to this very suspicious land development project that is embroiling the leading liberal candidate for the South Korean president in the election that is coming up next year. So if you haven't checked out the last video, it kind of outlines what the details are about the land development scandal without getting too lost in the weeds. It essentially is an outline of how it would be plausible that a presidential candidate, while he was the mayor of a city, could have been the mastermind, you know, the man behind the curtain, to be able to figure out a way to direct a redevelopment project, which basically means like you're using land that is owned by the city and then saying like, oh, we're going to develop all of these like uh, apartment complexes and buildings and then say like, okay, well, you know, some of the money is going to be profits for the corporations and banks that help develop it and then the rest will go to the city but instead of it going to the city it can go into his pockets and so that is the accusation that is being leveled and people were kind of dancing around it but not this week because the second person to have been seriously investigated and then self off himself supposedly happened this week so in the past two weeks there have been two people who have now self off themselves and so now all of the other presidential candidates are saying no we need a special investigation to answer these questions because how can we place a person like this in the nation's top office. Of course, these are coming from the other presidential candidates who are his rivals, but this is now going beyond like political mudslinging. There's a lot of hubbub and a lot of heat and a lot of talk beyond just rival political camps, the media, the political circles, people are just being like, this is really uncomfortable. How many more bodies have to pile up? The reason why today it really amped up to another level was that we got these photos. These photos show that the presidential candidate, E.J. Myung, who is being accused of being the mastermind, did in fact know the dude who passed away this week. Or it looks like there was a very high chance that he knew the dude that passed away this week. He had basically said, I had no idea who this guy was. I don't know who you're talking about. Yeah, maybe I might have gotten to know him well after the fact. You know, you guys are saying all of this stuff like you guys are accusing me of colluding with him back in 2015. No, I think I kind of met him way after that. Like, you know, when I was like the official in some other capacity. Well, we have pictures now one from 2009 that shows them on the same panel at a seminar, like seats apart. So then people are like, okay, well maybe, you know, you can go to a conference, you can be on the same panel. You can still say like, I don't know who that guy was. He was just at the same conference. We we're on the same panel. I don't know who he is. Okay, fine. The second and third pictures are what really put the nail into the whatever it is. It was a trip of just 10 people, just 10 dudes. Maybe there were girls, I don't know. But just 10 dudes, it was like a, you know, one of those like government style trips. It was to New Zealand and Australia. So when you go overseas with a bunch of Korean dudes, you really get to know each other because you really then 
are in a clique, you don't speak the language, you really rely on each other. You really get to know each other. You're really drinking with each other each night. You are really getting to know one another. They were there for like 11 days. So there are these pictures of them together. All right, then there's a second picture. They're literally like golfing together. And then he said like, I had no idea who he was. I never knew he existed. Then when he was questioned or his representatives were questioned, they started backpedaling this week, saying like, oh, well, he could have known about his existence perhaps, but mm, he probably didn't really know him on a friendly level. So now people are being very, people are uncomfortable with the fact that now he's backpedaling instead of being upfront with this. And he's changing his tune slightly. And the verbal patterns that I'm seeing here again is somebody who is exhibiting signs of NPD or, you know, psychopathy. And so, or sociopathy, one, you know, we'd have to get a psychologist to go in and get the exact diagnosis. But if you go back to some of the other videos where he calls his brother very on a, on a regular level to just verbally abuse him for no reason and say that he was going to use knives and, uh, you know, um, you know, the unmentionables of, like, use the knife in the hole where his brother came out of, which essentially means that it's his own mother, too. It's just a, like a cuckoo, a cuckoo and then not to mention his wife as well, screaming and yelling at her own niece, going all cuckoo and crazy, like there is something going on in that household that would not bring stability to the blue house i don't know that blue house that, you know because it's it's called the blue house because the roof is blue and it's serene and elegant and it has great feng shui well honey you get those family members in that house that roof is going to be on fire and we're going to be calling it the red house or something or the black house because it's going to be burnt to a crisp and so we really i think i agree we need to have an investigation we need to make sure that something is done because again how many more bodies have to pile up before something happens now again i mean now let's talk politics now let's you know now let's be strategic about this before i said like i was hoping that something you know even though this is a tragic situation but i was hoping that something would happen with this case because there had been political analysts who were predicting this, that by December or January, that Lee Jae-myung may, you know, under some circumstances, and they were calling this a long shot, but they were reading the tea leaves on this scandal and saying, like, he might be in jail by January, January 2022. But everyone's like, oh my God, yeah, you know, the election's just going to be in March. What are you talking about? Hey, if they if they can do this, I don't know, maybe they can do this. And if it turns out that there is something going on here where it is not in the nation's best interest and also, frankly, the world's best interest to have somebody of this character in a I don't know what you want to call it, G8, G10, G12, definitely a G20 country at the helm then we may see a different leaderboard for the presidential race instead of Lee Jae-myung and Yoon Seok-yeol going head to head again i predict it would probably be An Chol-su versus Yoon Seok-yeol depending on where the korean public is with this you know how progressive or liberal they are shim sang jung has always been like that stalwart very liberal candidate so whether she can truly be a person that can like then fracture the voting blocks remains to be seen but 
she's always there, and she's there this time as well. And she's also pressing really hard for an investigation. There is something just not right. There has always been something just not right about these uh, this this world that encapsulates this candidate. I'm sorry to say, and with these bodies piling up, it just does not feel right. And I don't know. What do you guys think? The more we look into this, the more it seems like, wow, we need to do something before it's too late. All right, guys. Well, hope you're having a good holidays because, you know, right, it's Christmas Eve and um, hope Santa brings you something good. All right. Talk to you later. Bye bye. Tune in next time. Don't forget to subscribe. Find us on YouTube, Instagram, Twitter, and Facebook. Love you.